I'd like to welcome you today to our devotional. We are in Genesis chapter 22, which is um, probably the most common chapter uh, in the book of Genesis regarding, in, regarding the life of Abraham. And uh, in this chapter, we see Abraham offering up Isaac upon the altar. And uh, we are just at the place now where we have seen um, God's command to Abraham. We've seen Abraham's response to that command. And we've also seen the conversation between the father and the son uh, yesterday. And now we come to Isaac on the altar and how God intervenes. And I want to read those verses to you today. We find them in Genesis 22. And beginning in verse 9 through verse 14, it says, They came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him, for now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by the horns, and Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And, God call, and Abraham called the name of the place Jehovah-Jireh, as it is said to this day, In the mount of the Lord it shall be seen. So as we come into these verses, in, in verse 9 we see the altar built. Uh, after three days of travel they come to the place that God had told Abraham of. And the Bible says there that Abraham built the altar there. In verse uh, 9. And then it tells us that he bound Isaac his son and placed him on the altar. You know, as we stop and we think about this, we think about how difficult this was for the father. But yet I want you to see how the son submits to the father and how the son submits to God and to God's plan. You see, in these verses, Isaac was old enough to carry the wood. Uh, which means he was old enough to resist. But he did not. And certainly, I'm sure he could have overran, outran his aging father, but there's no indication whatsoever that he tried to get away, but that he willingly submitted rather than resisting. And the exact same thing, as we think about the picture of the Lord Jesus Christ, the exact same thing is true of Christ. It says this in Isaiah chapter 53, and in verse 7, we find these words. It says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. And uh, so we see how the Lord Jesus Christ did not resist. Isaac here in this passage submits fully to Abraham. He could have easily overpowered his father, but he did not. And as I say, this is a beautiful picture of the absolute submission of Jesus Christ to the Father's will to die on the cross of Calvary. If you remember in Luke chapter 22 and verse 42, Jesus prayed the prayer there, Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. And he submitted to the will of his Father in the exact same way that Isaac submits to the will of his Father here in these verses. And then we see the intervention of God in verses 11 through 14. And as we come into these verses, what we find is this. Just as Abraham was about to plunge the knife into Isaac to kill him for the sacrifice and obedience to God's command, God intervenes and he made a change in the sacrificing order. Friends, God always intervenes in the, affair, in the affairs of men at his chosen time. And also God provides our needs in due time. And we need to understand that God always works according to his time frame and according to his way. Now as we come into these verses, the Bible tells us that the angel of the Lord called to him out of heaven. I believe that the angel of the Lord in this passage is the Lord himself. It is a pre-incarnate Christ as we saw in Genesis chapter 16 verses 7 through 11. We also saw one of those appearances in Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 3, and also in Genesis 21, verses 17 through 18. So the angel of the Lord that appears unto him is the pre-incarnate Christ himself. And then notice, he doesn't just say Abraham, but he says, Abraham, Abraham. 
calling his name twice, revealing the urgency and the intensity of God here in this passage. And you see that a number of times in the scriptures when God really wants to get someone's attention. He calls their name twice. Let me just give you a couple of, of examples here. A couple that I will read and then one that I will just quote for you in Genesis chapter 46. And verse 2, it says, God said unto Israel in the visions of the night, speak unto Israel in the visions of the night, and said, Jacob, Jacob. And he said, Here am I. If we were to take the time to go to Exodus chapter 3, you would find there that God calls out to Moses, and he says, Moses, Moses, as he calls from the midst of the burning bush. Then when God calls Samuel in 1 Samuel 3 and verse 10, he uses Samuel's name twice to get his attention. And then in Acts chapter 9 and verse 4, God comes and he has this encounter with Saul on the road to Damascus. And he says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? So whenever God uses somebody's name twice like this, it reveals an urgency and an intensity by God and his desire to get their attention. And notice what he says in verse 11. Abraham, Abraham, and he said, here am I. You know, I believe that's Abraham's way of saying, Lord, I'm right here where you've called me to be. I'm doing exactly what he is that you've called me to do. You knew where to find me because I am in the center of your will for my life. We see Abraham's obedience talked about in verse 12. He said, Lay not thine hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. The angel of the Lord gave a command here to prevent the slaying of Isaac. More welcome words would could never have been heard by Abraham at that moment. But I want you to notice a couple of things that will help us and that will apply to our lives. Note that this command came in the place of obedience. Abraham did not hear this directive until he obeyed God in what it was that God had called him to do. Friends, if we want the blessings of God upon us, we must be in the place of obedience. If we want divine providence working in our favor, we must be in the place of obedience. Friends, being out of the place of obedience will result in many troubles as well as many missed blessings. And then notice also how God says to him here, God gives him some words of praise and encouragement. Friends, we would all like the praise of God, but to obtain the praise of God, we must first obey God. And that obedience sometimes is, is very rugged things for us to do. Then we see a substitute provided by God in verse 13. Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. There is a substitute that is provided by God. We don't have time to look at all these verses today. We're almost at a time. But we let me just say this. The Lamb of God was providentially provided for us. In Revelation the dominant name for Christ is the word lamb. One of the examples where you see that is in Revelation chapter 5. And you will see there that in Revelation chapter 5 that the lamb is slain and he is worshipped in verse 12. That the lamb is worthy also in verse 12. That great multitudes have washed their robes in the blood of the lamb in verse 14. In Revelation 14, 1, you see the lamb stands on Mount Zion. In Revelation 14, 10, a beast worshiper is tormented in the presence of the lamb. In Revelation 17, verse 14, the lamb overcomes the kings of the earth. In Revelation 19 and verse 9, we find the marriage of the lamb. In Revelation 21, 9, we find the bride, the lamb's wife. In John 1, 29, we find that he is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And then notice how Abraham, in verse 14, called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Jehovah Jireh means it shall be seen. The Lord will provide. The Lord will see and provide. 
Friends, what a comfort and encouragement that is to us when we're obedient to the Lord, when we're doing what it is that he wants us to do. The Lord will see and the Lord will provide. And the Bible tells us in verse 14 that the name of that place stuck so that many years later, people still referred to the place as Jehovah Jireh. Friends, that was the idea of Abraham naming it that name, was to perpetuate the memory of this wonderful provision for Abraham, which showed how our wonderful God sees our needs and how he provides for us. Oh, friends, let you, I hope that you're encouraged in that today, that God sees your obedience, that God knows, and that God will provide for you. Matthew 6, 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. In Philippians 4.19, because the Philippian believers had been faithful in obeying God and putting him first and giving to God, Paul said to them, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Christian, let me encourage you today to claim those promises of God. Have a great day.